I come home cold and tired It's good to warm my bones beside the fire Far away across the field The tolling of the iron bell Calls the faithful to their knees Hear a softly spoken magic spell. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. In these days of social distancing, we are all finding ways to make it a physical distancing rather than social. And I'm doing the same, bringing you new videos as often as I can to brighten your day and quite frankly, to brighten my day. You see, your feedback in the comments on my channel really makes me feel connected and part of an extended virtual family. So please continue to like and subscribe and leave comments and start conversations. I have to say here that I'm frankly overwhelmed by the sharing that's going on here on my channel. I've had viewers reach out to me, share their stories and experiences, and also their pen resources. Your generosity has kept me going, and I'm happy to say, because of viewer support, I've been able to keep the fodder of this channel, pens, going, and there are plenty more videos to come. I've got a care package from Claudia of Bauer Inks in Toronto, with four new inks that I want to look at really soon. I've got a really cool pen holder that I'm currently making out of a paper art template of Marvin the maniacally paranoid and depressed robot from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy created by Bjorn in Germany. I think you ought to know I'm feeling very depressed. I've got five really interesting Fulluen pens just arrived from Joel in Pennsylvania, plus more pens from Ronnie here in Calgary, including a beautiful Visconti Rembrandt and a Monteverdi Impreza. So stay tuned and stay engaged, dear viewer, and let's have some virtual fun together. Today's fun is a couple of pens that I ordered from Bobby before all of this insanity started and just arrived last week. The Moonman M80S and M80 Mini. The M80S is an exact replica of the Parker 45, one of which, thanks again to Ronnie, I have to compare it with. So let's take a look at these Men in the Moon pens right now. <laughs> Okay, so here we are with the package. This is an interesting story, how this package arrived here in Canada. I ordered it on, well, I actually originally ordered it a while ago, and then the order was cancelled because the supplier on eBay couldn't get uh, stock. And then uh, they notified me when stock was back again, and I ordered again. That was on February 7th. It took from February 7th, until February 27th to get to Canada, but it came to Canada via Germany and then Montreal. It landed in Montreal on February 27th, and then it arrived here in Calgary on March 11th. So it took 20 days to get from China to Canada and 13 days to get from Montreal to Calgary. So go figure that one out. I know that... Uh, we're very challenged in the world right now in terms of transit. Things, I think, are starting to uh, flow again. And I think uh, China is starting to get a handle on their particular crisis, although it's evolving in other parts of the world. And again, first world problems here with us and our supply of fountain pens. So let's open this package. And we end up with two boxes, because I ordered two pens at the same time. One is a Moonman M80S, which I believe is there. And one is a Moonman M80S 80 Mini, uh, the pocket pen version. So let's take a look. Well, which one? Eeny, meeny, miny. Oh, we're not going to do that again. So it's a sleeve. And this is slightly a different color than I expected. It looks more teal 
in the ad. Um, maybe it's looking teal on the camera here. But it uh, is more gray. It's like a dove gray, and I actually find it very attractive. So I'm, I'm surprised at the color, but uh, I'm not displeased with the color. That's very nice. So this is the Moon Man M80, and this is the full-size version. Uh, this pen kicked up a little bit of a controversy as well because it is a part-for-part -part absolute match for the Parker 45. Now, I reviewed a Parker 45 a while back, and I'll link the uh, that review right here so you can see that. It's a friend's father's pen that was purchased back in the late 60s, early 70s. And in that video, I went over some of the fascinating history of how the Parker 45 ended up being a hero in China with the Hero Pen Company. And now this Moon Man, all coming from the original Parker equipment, engineering, and plans, and everything. Uh, that's a, a fascinating story I'll get into a little bit when I do a head-to-head. -head. I'm going to borrow my friend's Parker 45 back again, and we're going to compare it with this pen. But let's take a look at it here. If I can get it apart. Yeah, I figured it was a pop top. It was not coming off. Yeah, that was uh, difficult to get apart. Yep, there. Just the first couple of snaps were a little bit tough. So there we go. Now, of course, my friend's Parker 45 is an original Parker 45, and it had a 14 karat gold nib, and this is a stainless steel nib. But as I understand it, uh, I know Chris Rapp did a uh, video comparing the two pens and did a parts interchange and made a Franken pen out of it, and I'm intrigued to do the same thing. But uh, that nib should come right out of there. I'll worry about it later. But that nib should come right out of there and be interchangeable with the Parker. And there's our converter. That is the Parker size. Which should fit Pen BBS converters, in fact. That might even be a Pen BBS exact converter. I'm sure that they use... Yeah, it's not branded, so I'm sure that they use the same kind of suppliers for these things. I wrote with the Parker 45 for a bit, and I was really pleased with the way the pen felt in the hand, the deep posting. And we'll see how this very inexpensive homage clone of the Parker 45 fares. So I'll clean that pen out, and we'll ink it up. I don't know what with at this point. Now let's look at the mini one. This is not a knockoff of the Parker 45 because it is short. But I liked it because it was so similar to my beloved, my beautiful Pilot E95S. This pocket pen is just so gorgeous. Every time I have a... You can notice it's on camera all the time. Every time I have an opportunity to talk about it. It turns into a full-size pen, very light, beautiful, well-balanced, writes beautifully with that 14 karat gold nib. I write with it almost every day in my journal. So many pens, so little time. And this one, relatively the same thing. I thought it might be the same size. It's a lot shorter. Yeah, it's a lot shorter. Not uncomfortable. In fact, it's very nice in the hand. That's quite lovely, actually. And, of course, this one needs a, a smaller converter, which they put in the box. And it's an eyedropper kind of deal here. Two men in the moon. Oh, oh, that is all fine. Isn't it magnificent? It's imperial. And, uh... We'll come back with some uh, 
size comparisons, some measurements of both pens, and do some writing samples. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about these pens after I've written with them for a while. But on first glance, I'm liking them. It has been several days since I unboxed the Moon Men. I think I did the unboxing on March 11th, and today is March 27th. In the intervening time, I've been able to borrow back my friend Ron's mid-1960s Parker 45, which I did a review on back in December. You can see that video right here. And I've also been able to write with all three pens to compare them. I want to put this full-size Moonman M80S up against the Parker 45 for comparison. And also, put the pocket-sized M80 Mini up against my Pilot E95S. It's a bit of apples and oranges with the Mini to the Pilot comparison, but I'm interested nonetheless. So let's take a look at these pens, and then I'll give some size comparisons, some measurements, and come back with some writing samples. Please stay tuned after the writing samples where I'll give my opinion on what I like and what I don't like so much about these Moonman pens. To start with, I'm really seeing both ends of the Moonman scale. I've been writing almost every day with this Moonman M800 Galaxy, and it is just an amazing, amazing fountain pen. The M800 with a Bach nib is running around $60 US right now, whereas these M80s were eight bucks US each. And without giving away too many spoilers, eight bucks is just about right for these pens. Starting from the top, the M80S has a chromed metal finial, which has a concave divot in the top, which is similar, but different to the Parker 45. Some models of the Parker 45 have this exact finial divot, however. The finial holds the arrow clip in place. Again, the arrow clip is similar, but different than the Parker. There are no stamped feathers or arrowhead markings on the Moonman clip. The Moonman clip is stiffer than the Parker's, but it's usable. The cap tapers up to a chrome cap ring that has Moonman laser etched into it. There is a small step down to the barrel, which goes straight for just a short amount of time and then tapers down to a chromed metal finial and which also has a divoted end, similar to the Parker 45. There were many model variations on the 45 that had these end finials, both in plastic and metal. The cap snaps off to reveal the long and slender section and the semi-hooded style nib, a style that Parker invented. This nib was advertised as a fine 0.05 millimeter thickness nib, but as we'll see, they both write more like a an extra fine. The cap liner looks like it's held in place by a coated Phillips screw. You can almost see it there. I also notice there's no clutch mechanism to secure the cap on this Moonman. The Parker cap, on the other hand, has a clutch mechanism in it that you can just see there that glides onto the section rather than the snap cap of the Moon Man. My pilot also has one of these gliding clutch mechanisms. You can see it there. There it is. A little out of focus, but there she be. And I can say it's one of the many nice features of this pilot pen. There's something very, very satisfying and luxurious about the way that cap glides onto that body on the pilot. The cap posts deeply and securely, and even actually posts a little bit deeper than the 45, making the Moon Man slightly shorter than the 45 when it's posted. The pen feels just terrific in the hand and is well balanced. It is slightly nicer posted than unposted, but either way is fine with this pen. The section unscrews to reveal a Parker size cartridge converter. This converter is identical to a pen VBS converter. In fact, I have a 
pen BBS converter inside my Parker 45 because it is much easier to use than the original Parker squeeze aromatic style converter. The pen will take Parker long cartridges as well as Parker shorts and it will also take Lamy long cartridges. But it will not take two Parker short cartridges piggybacked. The nib unit unscrews fairly easily from the section and the nib can be easily removed from the unit. I won't do it here, but the process can be seen in my video on the Parker 45 where I take the nib unit apart and take the nib out. The nib units from the Parker 45 and the M80 are interchangeable, as are the barrels and the sections. The caps, however, are not, and that's probably due to that clutch mechanism being different on the two pens. I mentioned in the unboxing that there is a reason that these pens are so similar. It has to do with the outreach to China in the late 1970s by the Parker Pen Company to the Chinese Hero Pen Company with the intent for Hero to produce 45s for Parker in China. You can find a more detailed discussion of this bit of fascinating pen history in my video on the Parker 45. You can see a bit of that video right up here in this link with the timestamp right to that section. The skinny is that Parker provided the expertise, designs, engineering drawings, tooling, and mechanics for Hero to produce Parker 45s and when the project fell through, because Parker pulled out at the last minute, Parker gave all of that technology to Hero as a gift. Hero began almost immediately making the Hero 100, which is now a much loved and highly sought after fountain pen. Take a look at eBay and see how much those pens are going for. I don't know this for sure, but every instinct tells me that Moon Man is using the same molds, casts, and engineering specs with much more inexpensive materials to produce these M80s. Let's turn our attention now to the M80 Mini. He is exactly like you in every way. Except one eighth your size. This is a very clever variation by Moon Man. The entire front of the pen is identical to the M80S. They simply shortened the barrel and created a funky little squeeze eyedropper type converter to fit the little barrel. I know people malign the Pilot Con 40 converter that fits the Pilot E95S and other pilots, and they're justified as it is really awful in my opinion. However, this little thing here is horrible. It takes a couple of drops of ink and it's aerometric I didn't even try it. Instead, I've been doing what I've been doing with my pilot. And that is that I've been using a Parker short cartridge and eyedropper filling it. In my pilot, I've been using a pilot cartridge and eyedropper filling that. Because if you put a Con 40 in the pilot, you can't see the ink supply. And there's less ink available in that converter than there is, is in a pilot cartridge. So that works like a dandy for me. And that should work well here for me as well. Unfortunately, the short Parkers are not sold in Canada, but you can get them through Amazon. I suppose pretty soon you'll be able to get them from Skip the Dishes as well. Fast food, liquor, and fountain pen ink, right to your door. <laughs> oh, yay, look, there's a piece that doesn't have floor on it. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Moon Man M80S and the Moon Man M80 Mini next to a Pilot E95S, a Parker Sonnet, and a Pilot Metropolitan. And here they are posted. This is the Pilot E95S the Moon Man M80 Mini, the Moon Man M80S, the Parker Sonnet, and the Pilot Metropolitan. Now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample.
So we are back with the writing samples for these two Moonman M80s. The paper here is Clairefontaine 90 GSM. And this is the Moonman M80S with a fine nib steel. And this is the M80 Mini with a fine steel nib. So I'll write with each of them as we go. The fine steel. And this is the Moonman M80 Mini with a fine steel nib. And the ink today for both of these pens is Iroshizuku. Konpeki. Let's check the wetness for both of these pens. I think I'll just put a M80S on this side and M80 Mini on that side. It's fairly wet. Not as wet, but these are functionally exactly the same nibs. We can swap them back and forth. As to line variation, as I said earlier, this really is an extra fine to a fine uh, writing experience here. Uh, but the line is fine and it has very little variation to it at all, if any, and very, very stiff. Nothing. Let's write with both of them. This one actually feels a bit, as you can see, it's less wet. It feels a little bit scra more scratchy. Uh, this one's not too bad. And as to reverse writing, well, this one writes better in reverse than it does forward. How about this one? This is a very fine line in reverse, but it does write. And let's check on some quick writing. Seems to be keeping up pretty nicely. No skips. Now, what do I like and what do I not like about these two pens? First, they're both very inexpensive pens. As I mentioned, they're only $8 US a piece and they're eminently affordable. They both write. They both feel comfortable in the hand and post very deeply and securely. The M80S is a bit longer in the hand, very comfortable. But as a pocket pen, this one is 
a lot shorter, but it is very comfortable. This way, it is way too short to be written with unposted, as most pocket pens are. I wouldn't feel uncomfortable about throwing them in a bag or a briefcase or tossing them on the desk. If it breaks, you get another for the price of a mocha latte grande with sprinkles. And your name spelled wrong. Is there a man to hug and kiss here? And I like the color and the chrome accents. It's very stylish. However, what I don't like about these pens is they write like nails. The nibs are stiff and have a zilch character. Of course, the Parker 45 doesn't have a lot of character in the nib either, but the Parker just feels different. Uh, it's not just the weight of that gold cap, uh, which only is a gram more, I think, on the cap. But you can feel that plastic resin has more quality to it. The entire pen has a more quality feel to it. What's the difference? Is the resin harder and this is softer? I, I don't know, really, but uh, this just feels very, very plasticky, very, very inexpensive. I hesitate to call it cheap, but it certainly is cheaper materials than what you'll find in this uh, gold-filled cap Parker 45. So there you have it, two cheap fountain pens on the moon. Will they write in zero G? And yeah, I don't want to know. If you like this video, what's wrong with you? No, yes. Don't answer that, but please click like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification when more nonsense like this is posted by me. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.